so in terms of what the role of BRAF mutation is in um, melanoma, actually up to half of patients with melanoma have a BRAF mutation in their tumor. And in those patients, the BRAF mutation actually is oncogenic, which means that it actually drives the development of the cancer. Um, and uh, we actually understand very well kind of the pathway that's involved in that. It's called the MAP kinase pathway. Um, and it's basically, because of the mutation, we have aberrant signaling through that pathway that drives the cell into continuous proliferation and growth. And actually now we also know it affects the tumor microenvironment to make it uh, less immunogenic as well and less responsive to immune therapy. And so um, those mutations, again, appear in about half of the patients. Uh, very specifically, there's about 80 to 85% of those mutations are V600E. Another five to seven percent are V600K, and then there is a smaller percentage of other mutations that could be relevant. Um, so the presence of a BRAF mutation, from my perspective, uh, simply gives us additional alternatives for those patients in terms of using targeted therapy. Um, in the past, there used to be some, uh, some kind of uh, questions about the prognostic significance of having a BRAF mutation, where it seemed to be a bit more aggressive disease. Uh, but again, I think the landscape has changed because now we have therapy that, that can alter the outcomes of those patients. So the BRAF mutation is a mutation that, is, um, uh, th that affects the BRAF gene, which is actually part of the MAP kinase pathway. And the MAP kinase pathway is basically a signaling pathway that starts at the cell surface, um, signals through RAS, then RAF, then MEC. And ERK, ERK is the last protein that actually gets into the, the nucleus and changes the expression of genes and so on. So that kind of pathway is sequential. And uh, when we have a BRAF mutation, the BRAF itself get, gets, uh, becomes the oncogenic signal, so to speak, and, and just kind of takes over and starts firing through that uh, pathway and activates MAC, activates ERK, and leads to cell proliferation. So the first uh, targeted therapy that was very specific to the, B to the mutated BRAF protein was actually vemurafenib, and now we have dabrafenib and encorafenib, and those three drugs all go to the BRAF, the mutated BRAF gene um, blocks the signaling through it, and by doing that shuts down the oncogenic signaling through the BRAF, uh, through the MAP kinase pathway, and leads to cell death, and also, as, as, as I discussed a little earlier, actually changes the tumor microenvironment to, a, uh, more, uh, favorable, to be more favorable for um, immunotherapy as well. Now, the interesting part is when you inhibit the BRAF gene alone with the BRAF inhibitors, that's effective and that uh, shuts down the, the, the oncogenic signaling through the uh, MAP kinase pathway. But the cell actually tries to figure out, the cancer cell tries to figure out ways to bypass it. And so the vast majority of the time, um, about 50% actually through reactivation of the MEC, uh, of MEC, and another 25% also involves activation of MEC. So they usually, I usually summarize it as three quarters of the time. You basically have multiple different mechanisms that all kind of hone on MEC and reactivate signaling through MEC itself. So that actually made it a really easy target because MEC inhibitors were being in, were in development as well. So we have trametinib, we have uh, binimetinib, and we have uh, cobimetinib, and those are three uh, MEC inhibitors that are capable of, again, shutting down the signaling through that pathway through MEC. And so um, as we started dealing with BRAF inhibitor resistance, and we figured out that, again, three quarters of it was driven through MEC, it made a lot of sense to combine BRAF and MEC inhibitors. And obviously that ended up being more effective, quite significantly more effective. We increased response rates, we increased progression-free survivals, and interestingly enough, it ended up being less toxic in general. Uh, it improved the toxicity of BRAF inhibitors, also, although it kind of generated a few new toxicities that you know, were not as significant before, but improved patient outcomes. And at this point, we almost never use BRAF inhibitors alone. We always use the combination of a BRAF and a MEC inhibitor. The COMBD was a study that looked at the combination of the brafenib and trametinib compared to the brafenib alone. And that was a large randomized phase three trial that confirmed what we had seen in a smaller randomized phase two trial, 
uh, that showed that the brafenib and trametinib had a higher response rate and a better progression-free survival than uh, BRF inhibition alone with the brafenib. The interesting part is we always thought of targeted therapy as something that's capable of giving you a very quick response, but the progression-free survival was around 10 months, so you kind of figured that within 10 months you will have to you know, kind of find some other therapy for your patient or think about what the next step needs to be. Now, w what people, uh, you know, kind of sometimes mistake when we talk about the median progression-free survival is the fact that that's only the median, which means 50% of patients progress at that time, but the other 50% actually may not progress until later, and some of them may not progress at all. And so the interesting part from the long-term data has sh is, is, the f is the fact that there is a some proportion of patients that actually don't progress as they continue on therapy. And that proportion can be as high as 20, 25 percent, which was really interesting to see, again, because we don't think about targeted therapy as inducing, as inducing durable responses. But yet again, with five years of data now, actually we do.